Back in 2022, we took a look at the top 10 startups that are based in Mumbai, but there were a lot of companies based in Maharashtra that aren't based in Mumbai that we didn't get to cover in that video. And so today I want to talk about the top 10 startups in the state of Maharashtra as a whole that don't happen to be based in Mumbai. And we're going to start our Maharashtra journey in the city of Pune, where we have electric bicycle maker eMotorad. Back in 2020, Rajiv Ganjopati, Kunal Gupta, Aditya Oza, and Sumit Batawar launched eMotorad to sell pre premium e-bikes at affordable prices to the world. See, when eMotorad started, the Indian e-bike market was thought to be non-existent because nobody wanted to put a battery on their bicycle. Instead, most Indians opted for electric scooters, but the global e-bike market was huge. In fact, and this might come as a big surprise to some people, it's actually bigger than the electric scooter market, which is pretty crazy. So Kunal and his team decided to build their premium e-bikes right in Pune, which gave them a price advantage and helped them to build an international brand from day one. At the moment, eMotorad is able to make about 76% of their e-bike by procuring parts within India, but according to Kunal, they're gonna bring that number up to 92% by the end of 2024. So far, they've already sold more than 80,000 e-bikes, and the majority of these e-bikes have been exported outside of India. In just three years of their operations, they've managed to sell e-bikes worth 300 crore rupees, with 128 crore rupees worth being sold just last year in 2023. All right, next up on this list, we have another Pune-based startup, this one called Quintrans Hyperloop, and it was founded by Pranay Lunia, Kartik Kulkarni, Aniruddha Atigre, and Prasanna Kalami in 2021. So Quintrans is the first Asian startup trying to bring the elusive Hyperloop technology to market, and it was while studying at MIT Pune that Pranay and his co-founders first came across this technology. And of course, being engineers, they just wanted to build this technology for themselves. They found it really interesting. But since 2019, when they first took part in SpaceX's Hyperloop pod competition, their research team has won multiple such Hyperloop competitions, raising up to 80 lakh rupees in grants. And all of this happened, by the way, before Quintrans Hyperloop was even founded as a company. But today, they've already built India's first concrete Hyperloop tube, which they'll be using to do trial runs of their Hyperloop technology by the end of 2024. Now, a lot is riding on this test run for Quintrans and also for India, especially considering the fact that Hyperloop technology is not an easy technology to master. In fact, nobody has achieved commercialization of this technology and Hyperloop One, one of the biggest companies in this space, has actually decided to shut down even after raising close to $450 million. All right, moving on to the next company in this list now. Again, we have another Pune-based company. This one is a fintech unicorn called OneCard. Founded by former ICICI Bank employees Anurag Sinha, Rupesh Kumar, and Vibhav Hathi in 2019, OneCard offers premium co-branded digital-first credit cards. So Anurag had worked with fintech giants like Paytm in their early days and was convinced that the future of financial services in India would be built by fintech companies and not by banks. And so while working with ICICI Bank, Anurag's biggest insight was that more than 60 to 65% of loans were availed by existing customers. But very few people felt comfortable taking a loan from a company that they hadn't heard of. And so Anurag had to first build a company and earn these users' trust, and that led him to credit cards. Back in 2020, India barely had 57 million credit cards compared to almost 830 million debit cards. And as the spending power of middle-class Indians increased, Anurag knew that the number of credit card users would grow rapidly. And so OneCard launched their first co-branded metallic credit card in partnership with banks in 2020 to entice a younger customer base. And as of March of 2023, OneCard has issued more than 1.2 million credit cards across India. And the company even became a unicorn in 2020 after raising $100 million from their investors. All right, next up, we have another unicorn, this one in the B2B e-commerce space, Elastic Run. Founded by Sandeep Deshmukh, Shitesh Bansal, and Saurabh Nigam in 2016, Elastic Run is helping Kiranas in rural India source their products directly from FMCG brands. And you can kind of think of Elastic Run as Iran, but for rural India, which at first might seem like a bit of a silly idea. Why would someone try to solve the distribution problem in rural India where demand is low and the chances of failure are pretty high? But that's exactly the reason why Elastic Run's founders decided to solve this problem. See, there are about 12 million Kiranas in India and almost half of them are in rural areas. In other words, the TAM here is pretty massive and competition is almost non-existent. And so if Elastic Run can solve this problem, then they will continue to dominate this segment without any competition. Now, out of the 6 million Kiranas in rural parts of India, Elastic Run is already serving 6 lakh of these stores in 1.2 lakh villages. And the question is now, how did they actually manage to do this? How have they been able to pull this off? Well, companies like Oran, for example, are spending a lot of money on building their own warehouses and delivery 
delivery fleets to make their B2B e-commerce models work. But Elastic Run, well, they decided not to do that because it wouldn't have made financial sense for them in rural parts of the country to spend so much money when the demand really isn't as high as urban stores. And so what they did instead, and this is pretty genius, is they started partnering with local shop owners and they used their spaces and their delivery fleets to serve stores. And the result is that Elastic Run has brought in 4,755 crore rupees in revenue in FY23. And what's interesting is the fact that they've managed to achieve all of this at a fraction of the losses when compared to giants like, for example, Ordan. All right, moving on to the next company in this list, we have renewable biofuels manufacturer, Green Jewels. This company was founded by Virag Havan Sankaran in 2018, and they've developed a technology that converts agricultural waste into biofuels that could be used to power diesel vehicles and replace LPG as fuel. Their flagship product is called Abhilasha Liquid Fuel, and it's already been tested and validated by IIT Chennai and can essentially be used to replace diesel to power diesel-powered vehicles. And the best thing about this fuel is that it burns really cleanly. So it's created from agricultural waste, and it doesn't produce sulfur oxides, which is one of the major pollutants emitted while burning fossil fuels. The company develops all of their biofuels at their biorefinery in Pune, and Green Jewel Solutions will help the Indian government in their mission to convert 5% of all diesel into biofuel by 2030. And they had even raised $4.5 million back in 2021 to commercialize their operations. Okay, so now we're going to make our way over to the city of Nagpur, where we have a premium popsicle and ice cream brand called Licksters. The company was founded by Parimal Kalikar and Divya Subaraju in 2019, and they started their journey from a 120 square foot store with just six flavors. And the company only managed to sell about 9 lakh rupees worth of popsicles in their first year of operations in FY20. But by the time they came on Shark Tank India Season 2, they had already done 86 6 lakh rupees worth in sales in the first half of FY23 and we're expecting to close the year at 2 crore rupees in revenue and today they offer more than 30 different flavors of ice creams and popsicles. Now we're not quite sure if they were able to achieve the sales targets that they presented on Shark Tank India for FY23 but they did close a deal with one of the sharks Amit Jain one of the co-founders of Gardeco and this is a huge deal for a small company from Nagpur. All right, moving on to the next company in this list, we have another startup from Nagpur, this one a cancer diagnostic solutions provider called Early Sign. And these guys are doing something really innovative, so we decided to reach out to the founder to get more details on their progress. This company was founded by Shubendra Singh Thakur along with his college professor Deobra Begde in 2019, and Early Sign has developed an oral cancer detection kit which can detect the cancer even before it's developed into a tumor. And unlike biopsies, which are expensive and painful, Early Signs Kit uses just saliva, making their cancer detection process non-invasive, painless, and quick. In fact, it's so quick that it'll give you results back in just 60 minutes. They started clinical trials of their kit back in 2021 and are expecting to commercialize it by the second quarter of 2024. And the best part is that this kit is going to be very affordable, as it's expected to be priced at somewhere between 400 and 2,000 rupees. Oh, and the best part is they're not stopping at oral cancer. Cancer. They've already raised 2.67 crore rupees and are now in the middle of raising a Series A round of 18 crore rupees to develop another diagnostic kit for lung cancer. All right, now we're going to make our way over to the city of Nasik, where we have an agritech startup called Vesatogo Innovations. This company was started by Akshay Dixit, Sagnika Chakraborty, Vebhav Shelke, and Ashish Mahalankar in 2018. And basically, Vesatogo Innovations builds software that helps farmers increase their profits by making their operations more efficient. According to Vesatogo, about 10 to 12 percent of farmers' income is usually spent on logistics, and so their flagship product, Togo, basically works as an Uber for farm produce. Once a farmer decides who to sell their produce to based on the price and demand shown in the Togo app for different crops, they can use Togo to arrange for an on-demand pickup to transfer their produce to their customers. And so just like Uber removes the rider's need to rely on a personal vehicle, Togo does the same thing for farmers by doing away with the cost of ownership of transportation vehicles while also ensuring that they can gain access to transport vehicles whenever they need them, which of course reduces the chance of food wastage. And back in 2021, Vesa Togo even won the National Startup Award for their innovative solution for farmers. All right, moving on to the next company in this list, another Nasik based company here. We have a drone software startup called Passenger Drone Research. Founded by Anil Chandalia and Vishal Darangar in 2018, Passenger Drone Research makes software for the management and operation of drones. 
Their flagship product, Aero GCS, enables everything from live tracking to providing real-time analytics based on captured images. And then there's also Aero GCS Green, which is specifically tailored for farmers, which equips drones with the ability to map entire fields and also identify specific spots that need to be sprayed with pesticides and insecticides. And so by giving farmers actionable insights, this enables them to operate drones with more efficiency and also cost effectiveness. The company recently received an order worth 18 crore rupees for their flagship product from drone manufacturers and claims to have a 75% market share in India. Also last year in 2023, they raised 3.5 crore rupees to further strengthen their software product portfolio. And then to wrap this list up, we're gonna make our way over to the final city in this video, Vasai, where we have a prosthetic arms maker called Robo Bionics. Founded by Levelin Dissa along with Priyanka Dissa, Anil Nayar, and Ozden Mascarenas in 2016, Robo Bionics makes affordable bionic arms for people who have lost their arms or were born without arms. Their flagship product is called Grippy, which the company launched back in 2021. And according to one of their co-founders, Levelin, while other similar imported bionic arms can cost as much as 10 lakh rupees, Grippy costs just 2.5 lakh rupees, which is one fourth the cost of imported arms. They've already sold 100 units and their revenue has reached 25 lakh rupees in FY23. Robo Bionics is expecting to close FY24 by selling 50 lakh rupees worth of their bionic arms and they've managed to do all of this while staying bootstrapped and relying on government grants. And their company was even one of the winners of the National Startup Award 2021 for their medical innovation. And Levelin said that they're planning on raising VC once they reach 2.5 crore rupees in annual sales. And they're expecting to touch that number within the next two years. All right, those were our picks for the top 10 startups from Maharashtra that aren't based in Mumbai. But if you wanna watch our video on the top 10 Mumbai startups, you can find a link to that video in the top right corner of your screen. But either way, thank you so much for watching and I will catch you in the next one.